Okay, greetings, welcome. So I thought I would do a little addendum to the uh, bifilar coil experiments. And I found this one particularly interesting because there's no earth ground involved, yet I'm still um, confused and uh, mugawumped as can be. But I, I thought it was pretty interesting. And so I'll just show it to you and I'm getting kind of saturated with the weirdness with, with all this, so I'm probably going to go back to uh, trying to spin a rotor here pretty soon. But I thought I'd, I'd um, show this, and then I will be working on this um, on the back burner. Okay, so as usual with these things, they start out simple, and then they, then they just become incredibly complicated and confusing. Maybe not complicated, but confusing. So we have a 1UF cap here. This is, uh, you know, standard with what I've been doing. We charge it up through the two opto-isolated relays, then it's isolated on there, and we discharge it. And we're discharging it through one strand of the bifiler. So one strand goes there, the other strand goes out to there. When that black switch switches, then a connection is made and it can discharge through there. And I'll just show it to you on the on the oscilloscope for a moment. And that's what we see. And the Q factor kind of sucks because it's a big 1UF cap and this thing doesn't have a good L over R ratio. It doesn't have that much induction as compared to its resistance. But that's, you know, that's what you'd see. So this is all normal. Now the other thing that I've done this time is I have a bridge rectifier here and it's going to a 1UF cap basically just to, to smooth it and then I have this meter on here and when I turn this on we can look at it just uh, you know naked or um, I'll probably load it as well with either a 10K or a 1K ohm probably with a 1K ohm resistor Okay, so here I just decrease the discharge time to 200. It looks like that now, which is fine. And we're drawing uh, 0.02, so we're drawing like that many milliamps. We've got the bridge rectifier, so where should we put it? So you generally put it across the two ends of the, the coil that you're discharging. So one end of the coil is connected to here the other end of the coil is connected to here and if we hook that up then we see we're getting um 6.67 volts out in to there now interestingly if you hook it up to here which is the connection that's made briefly when this discharges gives you modestly more voltage, which is kind of nice. Uh, uh, whatever. I'm not sure I understand that. Where it gets interesting. All right, I've been throwing wires around so much. Let's hope I can repeat what I saw the last time. But what's interesting is um, if you want to rectify between the primary and one of the strands of the secondary. So if we put one end of the bridge rectifier to here and we put the other end to one of the strands there we're still getting 6.3 volts out and it is come on it is the way i term it is chiral so if we put the other end in there we get essentially nothing out however if we move this to here we're back to 6.3 volts now the other thing we'll do in a moment is we'll load this across a 1k ohm resistor but before we do that we want to start changing this because there's some interesting things that happen as we go along with that so this is a 1UF, and I'm going to pick, I think, a 70, uh, 70 nanofarad. Okay, so just real quick, I've got that loaded across 1K, and we're down to, to 0.697 instead of 
unloaded 6.72. Okay, so we've got our, our one UF there. We're drawing 23. I've got it like a five-second delay after it comes out of a for loop 4,000 times. That's why it keeps blinking on and off. Um, we're drawing 23 milliamps. Now, here's a 47 UF, so about 120 at the size. Okay, that actually made sense because we went down to about 120 at the size. This is about 120th. We're drawing 1.2 uh, milliamps. We're getting about 1.2 volts out of there with this setup. I'm going to try the conventional setup by going to here. And what we see now is 7.35. All this time I've been loaded. I've been loaded with 1 kilo ohm. Of resistance so we see 8.7 now and 7.35 volts yeah what if what if we put this here and it's essentially the same no it's not yes it is that's not 6.72 that's 0.672 and that's 1 so let's go back to this being directly connected to the other end. And so we're just we're just rectifying across the coil that we discharged. And we see with 1000 kilo ohms we're getting 7.35 out and 8.7. So I just mentioned real quick one reason why I picked a 1k ohm resistor is that now when you have your volts V equals IR I equals V divided by R so with that 1k ohm resistor in place there we know that that 7.35 volts the amperage is 7.35 divided by a thousand and then if you want to convert it to milliamps you times it by a thousand so this is putting out 7.35 milliamps and we're expending 8.7 milliamps so these are across the the thing that's being discharged now if we take this and put it back you know this goofy way that i was saying going to one of the strands there and we're all loaded again but see this goes down to 1.2 and this is at 1.19 which the milliamps are nearly the same now let's do something something further all right so i put in a 0 0.004 uf cap instead of a 0.01 uf cap so a little more than half is small and you know there's no earth ground so i mean everything's everything's normal right right <laughs> and so we're drawing the thing for the bridge off of here which is here's the wire and then the wire boom and when it when it does that across there that's when we we have this hooked up and this is hooked up to one end of a secondary so here's what we're seeing there. We're getting 0.891 volts, and here we're drawing 0.36 milliamps. So if you were paying attention, I'm sure you were. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, uh, to what I was blabbering about just a moment ago, um, that 0.89 volts equates to 0.89 milliamps. And this, of course, is measured as 0.36 milliamps. Now, I'm not sure how important that may or may not be, but let's put this back to, to conventional. That would conventional. And so 7.23 volts out and 7.36. And that means, you know, this is really high Q right now because we had a small cap 
and whatnot. And so we're, you know, you're never going to get those equal. But this is interesting. That that is 0.89 volts, and this is 0.36 milliamps. So I don't know what to make of that yet. Interestingly, if we put the other end, I've put the other end of the secondary in and removed the other one, it's nearly the same thing. Not quite as good, but nearly the same. So here I put in, instead of the 0 0.0047, a 0 0.002, yeah, this has hardly changed. It's gone down to like 0 0.034 to 0 0.032. This has gone up a little bit, so that's nice. And this hasn't gone down because there's capacitance in the switches and there's capacitance here. So you're getting small enough where what's happening is this isn't an integral part of what you're charging up now. This is... Uh, you're charging this up, but you're charging mainly this up, and you're charging your switches up, and those are what discharge across here. But let's get back to the main topic. And, and first, just real quick, you know, here I just set it up conventional again, 7.22, 7.35. So not really any better because you're starting to run into skin effect and things like that. But when we go out to where we were before, this is, it's only 0.8, but that's 0.32. So what does that mean? Even before we do that, I'm just, I don't know. I'm curious, what's, what's the voltage going to be when it's on? Come on, get off there. Ah, sorry. Okay, when it's unloaded, it's going to that, 7.38. And of course, the, the amp draw has gone down. But loaded, it did what I just showed you 0.846 and 0.32. So, what does that mean? And even before we get to that, I mean, I'm just saying anyone can do this. I mean, I'm just discharging a coil through a cap, and it happens to be by filer. And instead of rectifying across, both ends of the bifiler, I'm rectifying across one end of the bifiler and one end of your pickup. That's the only difference. And it doesn't matter greatly which end of the pickup, uh, which end of the other, you know, bifiler that you use. So we got this and we got this. And this means that there is 0.84 milliamps flowing and this means 0.32 milliamps flowing. So there's the conventional that might be right, and there's the silly that might be right, and I honestly don't know which one is right. So to say the conventional is that you have 0.84 milliamps flowing and 0.84 volts, and so you have like 1.6 milliamps, and here you have 0.32 milliamps at 10 volts and 3.2 milliamp uh, milliwatts. I'm trying to talk about power. I don't know if I'm doing a good job. Let's try that again. So if you're talking about power, you have 10 volts, you have 0.32 milliamps. So 10 times 0.32 is 3.2. Here you have 0.84 and milliamps flowing and you have 0.84 volts. So 0.64 milliamps flowing. So it's massively under unity. Now, the silly way to look at this, similar to when I hooked it up conventionally and we saw 7.2 volts there and 7.34 milliamps, and we say, oh, that's a great Q factor. It's 90% that this, when it's hooked up like that, as a COP of, of like three, uh, three and a half, close to four. So the way to get to the bottom of this, and here's what I find interesting. If I turn this up to 20, here's, I'm, uh, this is 0.68 now, and this is 2.0, so the same, the same thing. So here, here's what I got to do. 
and here's how I'll get to the bottom of the question. And, you know, oftentimes it turns out conventional, but sometimes it doesn't. And it may not this time. We'll see. So, if you put a voltage doubler in, and by that I mean charging two caps in parallel, discharging them in series, that gives you the best transformation of voltage you're going to get. Uh, you know, 100% efficient in terms of uh, energy, and you lose half of your charge. So, if you did that, this will go up to 0.62, this will go up to 0.1.6. What does that mean? So, how do I say this? I mean, I understand when you put two caps in series, the capacit capacitance halves. But if the amp draw here is 0.32 here, and we go up to 20, and it's you know 0.65 there, and this is also doubled, then you're fine, and um, and you go from there. So th this is something that people might look at is um, you can with bifilar coil you can you can rectify off of uh, something like this and it might actually be interesting so as i said in the background i'm going to be building i think i actually made a video on doing a voltage doubler with um, solid state relays once i do the voltage doubler i'll know for sure and it might be instead of 0.65 that this is 1.2 1.3 and then, then you haven't gotten anywhere. But if it's still 0.65, then you're all set. So as I said, this one was fun because it's goofy and there's not even an earth ground. Um, so, yeah. In the meantime, I'll try to get out. I mean, I said I was going to do this. The video with um, Grok and integrating the equation for instant instantaneous amp flow. <laughs> that was a riot. <laughs> yeah. And then it got better when I tried to have it um, look at my coin collection and, and it started making up coins for me. So that was fun. Um, and then also just sort of a general interest. And, you know, when I say general interest, it's also me just wanting to, you know, get this down in my head and, and understand um, on capacitors in general. So we'll do that. I'll order some parts for spinning a rotor. And I'm going to be building this with a, um, a voltage doubler. So, you know, I'm trying to think of like a an exit thing to say, you know, it's it, like stay healthy. It, it sounds kind of fatalistic, but I, I, it's pretty good. Or like be well, but you know, then it's like Melania Trump. <laughs> so uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I mean, I could go with like live long and prosper, <laughs> but that's a little too goofy. Or uh, or be well. No, I, I tried that one. Uh, stay healthy, be well. Live long and prosper. Um, I, I mean, be well's all right, but Melania's got the the be best thing, so can't really go with that. I don't know. Um, hmm. I guess for the moment of it, uh, live long and prosper. Stay healthy. Okay, I'll talk to you more later. Thanks for coming along. Bye.